Hey everyone, it's Caleb. Welcome to your how to use pointers video. I recommend you check out our concept video where we did in person, just talking about why you might or might not want to use pointers, how to use them, what they do, etc. So now that you understand all that, we're going to go over the code and if you're just jumping in, we'll probably cover some of the concepts here as well. C++ Builder is the IDE of choice for rapidly building C++ applications. Utilize drag and drop visual components that are responsive and allow for cross-platform deployments. When building data-driven applications, you can bind data sources to visual components to make working with data easy. Go ahead and get started with a free trial of the Architect Edition, which will give you all of the features of C++ Builder. So whether you're a beginner just getting started or want to build enterprise level applications, C++ Builder is the tool for you. I'll leave a link in the description. So the very first thing is if we just create a variable like so, we can print this out and this is just going to give us the value of the variable, five. Now what I wanna do is I wanna build upon this and create a pointer to that data. So to create a pointer, you say what type of data you want to point to. So int and then an asterisk, and then you put the identifier. So for example, y, and then you need to say where you want to point to. The easiest way to do this is to use the address of operator. So the ampersand and then x. So it's a little funky syntax. If you've never seen it before, it's like, oh, what is going on with all this stuff? But now we created a pointer and we can use that in our code. So what I wanna do is I wanna copy this line here just so we can modify the first one a little bit. So what I wanna do is I wanna first see the address of X. You can see we get the sequence of hexadecimal numbers and that is what we wanna set the value of Y, our pointer to. So that is what's going on here. So you may also see it like so, and which one's clear, that's up to you. I kind of like it this way, honestly, because it kind of separates the type from the identifier. So we have an int pointer and it's called Y. However, it seems like a lot of people set it up this way as well. It doesn't really matter. You can see that even if we put it this way, the code runs exactly the same way. So it's not important which way you do it, just be consistent. So basically we set the value of Y to this value right here. But we don't really wanna work with that number a whole lot. So instead we can use the dereferencing operator and that is also the asterisk. So we can say, get the value that Y points to. And doing this, we're going to get five. So you can see we could use asterisk Y or X to get the same exact value five. And these things are connected. So what that means Let's go ahead and I'll put both of them just so we can see them at the same time. So we'll put a space here and then we will put asterisk Y. So this is what our code is going to give us. We get five and then five. If we went ahead and we changed X to six, when we run this, that change is going to be seen through both of these. That's because they're both talking about the same exact data. In fact, we can change this data through the pointer as well. So if we're talking about where this pointer points to, we wanna change that, then we need to use the dereferencing operator. So dereference Y, and we're going to assign that the value seven. So run this now, and you can see both of these show as seven. So one of the differences between pointers and references is that pointers can actually be reassigned to a point somewhere else, whereas references are always going to refer to the same area of memory. So if you wanna see this in action, what we can do is we can actually create another variable and we'll just set it to 10. And what we can do is if we want to update a pointer, instead of updating the data the pointer points to, we can update the pointer itself. And that is, def that is referred to as just the identifier by itself, Y. So now we could update this to the address of Z. And when we run this now, we get six and 10. So we broke that connection. Now Y points to the same location as Z. So any changes to Y are not gonna be seen in X and vice versa. So for example, we could set X to five and Y we could set it to, we could dereference it and set that to 60. And run this, we get five and 60. 
However, if we go down here and we print Z, let's just uh, add that in here somewhere. We'll put a space Z like so. Now when we run this, you can see Z in fact was updated to 60. So it's still going to work exactly the same way. It's always going to update whatever data it points to. Now the value of pointers is really seen in function parameters. Now again, I'm gonna be a little bit repetitive and repeat what I said in the previous video, but I would really recommend you use references over pointers. However, you will see pointers on occasion, and it's also good to get practice with just different things you might see in code. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna clean up some of our code. Let's go ahead and, oh heck, let's just go back to the beginning. So we have this variable x, and let's go ahead and create a function. So we're going to create a function, and this is gonna be void, and it's going to change the data. Just for demonstration purposes, and this is going to have a parameter, and the name here doesn't matter, so you can name it the same as this variable down here. It's because it's not going to be the same variable. Actually, it's gonna be two separate variables, but yeah, that's irrelevant. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say x is 10. And from main, we're going to invoke this. So change, pass in x. And then afterwards, I want to print x. So we'll just do that right here, like so and we run this, you can see the value of x is five, even though we reassigned a value here. So what's going on is x gets passed into the function, into this parameter, and it's copied, so then we change that data, but the original x does not get modified. If you want to use pointers instead, all you have to do is change this to a pointer, just like we did earlier, how to create a pointer variable, and now we can change the value at x by dereferencing it. Now when we run this, we got an error. All right, so since this takes a pointer, we're not actually passing a pointer in, we're passing in an integer variable. So to create this a pointer, we can just use the address of operator and now it should run and you can see the changes inside of this are seen on the outside after the function call. So that is how that works with pointers. So that's the basics of pointers. Up next, I would recommend you study memory allocation, understand the new keyword, and I'd also look into smart pointers and the different types. Just as an example though, we can use the new keyword and say something like new int five. And running this, we're gonna get some errors. And it says junk cannot initialize a variable of type int with an int pointer. So here's what we can do. We can actually define this as a pointer over here and now x is a pointer. So we don't actually need to use the address of operator anymore because it's already a pointer. And run this, we need to uh, use the dereference operator here. And you can see we get the value 10. So it still works, but now we are using this new keyword and we are putting this integer on the heap. The downside here is that you are responsible to deallocate this memory and you do that with the delete keyword. So I'm gonna do that down here. So we just say delete x, run this, everything works exactly the same. In this situation, we're not really getting a lot of benefit of using the dynamic memory. However, if you're going to keep the memory alive as long as you want until you manually delete it, that's when you might want to use the new keyword. Additionally, if you're using dynamic memory but you don't wanna to have to worry about freeing that memory when you're done, that's where smart pointers come in. We're not 